Howdy all, Phil here from the next 72 hours team out and about today having a look at the next 72 hours snake bite management kit which we've put together here. You'll notice there's two kits in front of you. On the right hand side here this is my own personal kit. I've been carrying this around in the bag for about two months now. It's gone on all my day hikes, weekend hikes as well as any search and rescue missions we've been on or any SES related activities. The one on the left hand side here is exactly the same, only the seal on the vacuum pack bag has been broken, ready to take those items out. So a little bit later on we'll pull them out and see what's in the kit itself. But if you just take a look here, if we bring them side to side you'll notice that this one here is well compressed, and this one here is nice and loose. Which uh, will bring me to the first point about this kit, we'll just move that one aside here, and we'll have a look at this one. So the first thing you'll notice is this kit itself is actually all vacuum packed nice and neatly in this bag here. There's a couple of reasons for that. The first reason is it's going to protect it from the elements surrounding. And it's also going to give the uh, contents of the bag some protection from abrasion or being shoved around in your pack or thrown around. Like I said, I have used this now for a couple of months or carried it with me in a number of different bags. And it's been dropped, put in other bags, and it's still going strong. The other reason for keeping it uh, vacuum packed like this, apart from saving space, is that you can take one look at it and know that it's all there. Uh, one of the major problems with any first aid kit is that you have a small accident, you'll cut yourself or um, have a small injury, you'll go to your first aid kit, you'll pull something out and later on you'll forget to top it up again. With this you can take one look and you know that it's all still there, it's still vacuum packed, everything that's listed on the contents here is still in the bag and that's vitally important because uh, when it comes to treating a snake bite kit, you're going to, a snake bite, you're going to need all of these things here. So it would be no good if you're out in the field, you've been bitten by a snake, you open this up only to find someone's already borrowed a bandage for a sprain, or someone's taken the pen out and the instructions, and you're at a loss of what to do. The other reason, of course, behind vacuum packing is it it keeps it in a nice, convenient uh, package here. This one, as it stands, fits quite nicely in the pocket of SES pants or cargo pants, cargo shorts, so you can keep it on your person when you're out hiking for quick access should something happen. So, moving on, we'll have a look at this um, first diagram up the top here. You'll see there's a number of different uh, objects on it. On the right-hand side here, we've got the funnel web spider, followed by the blue-ringed octopus, the cone shell, and an Australian snake. This kit itself is actually uh, designed to be used on all bites and stings from any of these creatures. So all of these, the treatment for all of these here is the same. That is the pressure mobilization bandage technique. So it's really a very multi-functional kit. We move down a bit more, we'll have a look at the contents. You've got a pair of latex gloves, a packet of sterile gauze squares, a permanent marker, three 10 centimeter compression bandages, which is vitally important a triangular bandage, one Solas approved rescue whistle, comprehensive instruction pamphlet and a user friendly patient notes card. Down here you'll see some more information on uh, where you can go to view the videos that we've done on this. So there's actually a video on the YouTube site of Next72 Hours where you can see this kit in use. Down here is just a little disclaimer saying that um, a lot of effort has gone into making sure this uh, uh, reflects current snake bite management protocols. However, um, it is important that you as a user or a, a person who's carrying this kit should be well trained in first aid as well. It's, it's vital that if you're going out there in the bush, going out there into um, places that are a bit remote, that you know what to do with the equipment that you've got when the time comes. It's really no use uh, pulling out an instruction manual when someone's been hurt that's just going to delay the treatment and uh, increase the chances of things going wrong. That's why we've got the videos on the website there, so you can go and see how to use this before you ever need to have to, should you ever have to. On the back here you'll see we've got the instructions card and the um, patient note card as well. So, moving along, we'll take a look at this one that's already been opened and pull the items out one by one and go through them. First off here is the instructions. So on the back here you've got what you shouldn't look for in a snake bite and what you should never do as well as some information on where to go to find out uh, more details. On the right hand side here we've got the patient's note card. This is perforated so that you can tear it off when the medics arrive and that you can give it to them to take. So you'd include things like the patient's name, emergency contacts, date of birth, the time that you first put the bandages on, when they were bitten roughly and then down here you've got observations. You've got five here and one up here that's uh, observations taken at roughly every 20 minutes or whatever works, uh, time, the pulse, 
and respiration so how fast their heart's beating how heavily or how rapidly they're breathing per minute uh, skin coloring what the color of their skin's looking like the temperature and also the sensation or feeling so whether they've got feeling in there in the limb that's been bitten whether they're going numb numbness might be a sign that you've got those bandages too tight and you need to loosen them off slightly but not take them off folded out here you've got the instructions and on this side here you've got some nice pictures to follow as well so it's going to give you a bit of a reminder as well the thing about this is you've got the video on the uh, YouTube site there we've got a downloadable version as well you can watch that study up you can practice with a cheap bandage or a crepe bandage until your heart's content and know what to do and this is really going to be a reminder should the time come that you ever need to open this and use it on the front there you've just got snake bite management followed by the logo so moving along here we'll pull the kit apart like I said you've got three one two three very high quality 10 centimeter compression bandages there are a lot of kits out there now some of them come with as little as one bandage some of them two but the reality is on the practice that we've done the testing we've done if you've got a taller person or a larger person and they've been bitten higher up on the limb you're really going to need three bandages to get there two bandages one bandage is just not going to cut it on a taller or a larger person and it's pretty vital that you get that compression going because you're trying to stop the spread of the venom through the lymphatic system up to the blood system at which point you're in big trouble if it gets here so we've included three bandages here these are super high quality we've done a lot of testing on them we've got a lot of samples in from all around the world and these are by far the best that we've been able to find very very elastic very very good quality they've got the nice clips here so they're not going to pierce the skin and, and make you bleed while you're doing it and uh, so there's three of those in the kit like I said so if you were to go to the chemist these days you could probably pick these up for about 16 to 24 dollars each they're fairly expensive so it's really a bonus to have three of them in here and and, and to be such good quality we have done a lot of testing on them and um, just your general crepe bandages or heavy crepe bandages are not really going to do the job that you need the idea here is that you need that compression to slow down that lymphatic spread because that's where the venom is going to go if you can't slow that down it's eventually going to travel up to your bloodstream and then um, it's going to go from there very rapidly through your entire system so we've got three of those we'll move on to what else is included in here like i said we've got a marker pen we've included a high quality well-known brand sharpie marker pen here this is to be used on the um, patient note card here and also one of those steps here it says is to um, mark a circle around the bite site as you'll see here and see in the video so it's important to mark the circle around the bite site so that the doctors can find it and also when you're finished bandaging you're going to mark an x on the bite site there so that they know where it is as well and that way they can remove part of the bandages while still keeping the compression on the rest of the body and stop that spread while they have a look at it so that's the pen that's included there good quality pen it's going to last the test of time until if and when you need that moving along in here we've got the gauze squares now these measure 7.5 by 7.5 centimeters there's three per pack you're going to be placing these on the bite side on the injured limb or part of the body and that is going to apply some pressure to it to begin with it's also going to soak up any potential venom that's been left behind and the hospital can use that with their venom detection kit kit to tell you exactly what sort of snake it was that you've been bitten by that's vitally important when it comes to administering anti -venom. so you're going to put that on first there after you've marked the bike site moving along in here we have a triangular bandage There's multiple of uses for these if you've been bitten on the arm or the upper limb you're going to be able to use this to secure the arm in a firm, uh, firm and non-moving position below the heart level so that you can avoid all spread there and keep your arm comfortable if you've used all three bandages on a lower limb for example you can use this to then splint the leg with something like a trekking pole a piece of wood something that's nice and straight and without too many pointy bits on it so that you can immobilize that limb because that's the other key to this is the mobilization stopping the patient moving because the more they move the faster they're going to spread that lymph the faster it's going to get into the bloodstream so that's what that's included for the bottom here you've got a little packet of latex gloves that's used to protect yourself in any sort of first aid scenario when you're treating a patient 
or treating someone that you don't know or anyone for that matter you're dealing with body fluids you're dealing with blood or a bite site you want to be protecting yourself this protects you and the patient so that's vitally important safety first safety of yourself safety of the patient and uh, health there so that's what that's included for and the last part of the kit here is the Solace approved whistle this is from the Acme company in the United Kingdom it's the uh, tornado whistle it puts out a decibel reading of around about 105 to 115 so it's extremely loud it's a peeless whistle uh, Solas approved safety of life at sea so it's going to be able to work if it gets wet there there's no pee in there to get stuck and stop making any sound and that's also important if you're out on the trail you want to avoid screaming or you want to avoid moving as much as possible you're going to get a lot more sound out of a whistle than you are from a scream that sort of high pitched frequency is going to travel a lot further and it's going to be easier for people to hear if, if you're in that scenario on the trail and you need to raise attention Again, it's always important when you're out hiking and you're going somewhere to leave behind some sort of intention form so that people know where you are just in case you don't return on time. So one brief look at again, we've got the triangular bandage, we've got the whistle here, the gloves, the gauze squares, your three compression bandages here, the pen, and the instructions there. And all of that's going to come in a nice vacuum packed bag here with the sticker on the front with those instructions on how to find the video and the tutorials for you to study out prior to having to use this so um that's been phil from the next 72 hours team with a look at that snake bite management kit that we put together for you stay tuned we expect that to be out and available to the public in the next couple of weeks so thanks for watching any questions queries please feel free to leave them and we will attempt to answer them as soon as possible thank you